So let's look at how we can use the sine law and cosine law to solve problems in obtuse triangles, that is a triangle with more than 90 degree angle in it. Like this one, obviously this angle here is more than 90 degrees. Well, it turns out we can use the sine law just like we did before. So here's the opposite pair. And let's say we're trying to find this angle right here. So here's my opposites. So sine 40 degrees divided by 10 is going to equal sine of x degrees, don't know what that is, divided by 12. So set it up exactly like you did before with the sine law. We're going to try to isolate x. So we'll multiply both sides by 12 because that'll get rid of this denominator. So now we have 12 times the sine of 40 degrees divided by 10 equals sine x. So let's go and figure out. I'm going to have to, oops, I'm going to have to make sure I'm in degrees here again. So 12 times sine 40 divided by 10 is 0.7713. And then in order to find x, I'll take the inverse sine of both sides, because that'll get rid of that. And taking the inverse sine of that answer, it gives us 50 point, let's call it 50.5 degrees. Now, what we have to keep in mind here, this is not going to be the answer for this. The calculator doesn't know when you give it a ratio of 0.7713, it doesn't know if you want the acute angle, that is the angle less than 90 degrees, or if you want the obtuse one. Remember this identity from earlier, that sine theta is the same thing as sine 180 minus theta. So the acute angle, is going to have the exact same ratio as the supplementary angle, 180 minus that angle. So when you put in the calculator, the inverse, find the inverse sine of 0.7713, it doesn't know if you want the acute one or if you want the obtuse one. But we'll know because we look at this triangle and we see this angle here is clearly obtuse. It's more than 90 degrees. So we don't want 50.5 degrees we want 180 minus 50.5, which would be 129.5 degrees. And you can see, of course, if we go and check the sine of, whoops, what did we say that was? Whoop. Oh, come on, get on the other side here. Sine of 129.5. See, it's giving us this same ratio, more or less, because we rounded, did some rounding in here, 0.77. So the answer we want is 129.5 degrees. So really, if we have a triangle, we can still use the sine law to, to find unknown angles. We would just have to make sure that when we get our answer, if the angle was acute, so if the angle were less than 90, like let's say this one here came out to being 50.5, we would keep that as our answer because clearly this angle would be less than 90 degrees. But if we're solving for an angle that is more than 90 degrees and our calculator gives us the um, acute angle, you have to remember to go 180 minus that one because we, we need to find the one that's greater than 90 degrees. So it's just a matter of keeping this in mind when we're finding angles bigger than 90 degrees using the sine law. Let's check this one out. So here's another obtuse triangle. Uh, it is one we're going to use the sine law because we have an opposite pair there and we know what this angle is and we're asked to find its opposite side. So this will be another sine law question. So uh, this time I'm finding a side length. So I'm going to put my side length up top divided by the sine of the opposite side equals the other side, 7, divided by the sine of its opposite angle there. So here to isolate x, 
I would just need to multiply both sides by sine of 115 degrees. Gone, gone. Multiply this side by sine 115. So that's 7 times the sine of 115 degrees divided by the sine of 25 degrees. Now there's no special consideration here that we need to take because when we punch sine of 115, when we, when we put in sine of an obtuse angle, bigger than 90 degrees here, it's going to give us the correct ratio. So it's just a matter of punching in sine 115 divided by sine 25 equals 15.01. 15.0. And let's say these were centimeters here. So we could say side x is 15 centimeters long. So there's no need to have any special provision for dealing with uh, an obtuse angle if we know what the angle is. Sine of 115 will always give us the correct, correct ratio. The only time where we have to worry about um, not giving what getting the answer what the calculator gives us is when we're solving for the angle. And if the angle is less than 90 degrees and we're looking for one that's more than 90 degrees, then we must take this into consideration here. But if we know what the angle is, like we have here, then we can just work the problem out as we would normally work it out using the sine law. Let's do this one here. Again, another obtuse angle here. We know two sides of the triangle and the angle in between them, and we're asked to find the opposite side. This would be a cosine law question. And whenever we're using the cosine law, we don't have to worry about any extra consideration at all, um, because the cosine law of any acute angle is going to not give you the exact same value of the obtuse. Remember, there was a negative sign in, in there. So if we're working with a cosine law question with an obtuse triangle, it's just business as usual. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of the angle in between them. So if I'm trying to find the opposite side, the other two sides squared together, squared and added together, minus 2 times 7 times 8 times the cosine of the angle in between. Work this out on the calculator. Hundred ninety four point nine one. So x will equal the square root of 194.91, which is 13.96. So if we round to the nearest whole number on this one, just say is 14. So side x would be 14. So no difference. If you're using the cosine law in any triangle, whether it's obtuse or whether it's acute, It'll always work, no problems. So here's one where we know three sides, one, two, three, and we're asked to find the angle over here. So this would be another cosine law question. Here's the formula for cosine law. And in this case, we're going to try to find this angle. So it's really important if we're going to find this angle that we start with its opposite side. If this is angle A, then this is going to be little side A on this side. So 19 must be on this side equals, doesn't matter which one's A or B, 11 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 11 times 13 times the cosine of angle A, which we're trying to figure out. So... Let's work some numbers out here. 19 squared, 361, equals 121 plus 169 minus 2 times 11 times 13, 286 cosine A. 
So we can add these numbers up. 290, 121 plus 169. But we can't subtract these two because this number is attached to this by multiplication. So now that we've added these up, 290, we will subtract that from both sides. Gone. That gives us 71 equals negative 286 cosine A. Now we can divide by negative 286. Gone, gone. Now we've isolated cosine A. So to isolate A, we will get rid of the cosine by taking the inverse cosine of both sides. So I need to take the inverse cosine of 71 divided by negative 286 and I get 104 degrees which is our obtuse tooth angle here so same thing cosine law when we're using it to find angles no problem it's going to give us the exact same angle that that we're looking for the only time whenever using sine law and cosine law with obtuse triangles that you have to worry about anything is when you're using the sine law to find an angle that's the only time you're going to have to worry about making sure you go 180 minus the angle that you're given if you're finding an angle that is obtuse. Otherwise, the sine and cosine law works exactly the same way with obtuse triangles as it does with acute triangles.